Hi, and welcome to the review session of Chapter 6, Elasticity and its Applications. Today we will speak about the concept of elasticity, as well as discuss the elasticity of demand and elasticity of supply. Before proceeding to the discussion of the elasticity, let me give you a question that I hope will help you to understand the concept better. Let's say that you have a limited monthly budget, which you spend on four areas, housing, food, entertainment, and education. The question is, given a reduction in your income or equal increase in the price of this, which one you will eliminate from your monthly spendings first, second, and third? Stop the video if you want to think about the question and perhaps rank the areas. Now, this question is a good way of thinking of your individual demand elasticity towards these four areas. You have elastic demand towards the product or service which you have decided to eliminate first, and most inelastic demand towards the one you have decided to keep till the end. So let's formulate what the elasticity of demand is. Elasticity of demand is a measure of the responsiveness of quantity demanded or quantity supplied to a change in one of its determinants. So there are several factors which affect the elasticity of demand. Let's discuss some of them. So first, availability of closed substitutes. Goods with closed substitutes tend to have more elastic demand because it's easier for consumers to switch from that good to others. Necessities versus luxuries. Necessities tend to have inelastic demand, whereas luxuries have more elastic demands. Definition of the market. The elasticity of the demand in any market depends on how we draw the boundaries of the market. Narrowly defined markets tend to have more elastic demand than broadly defined markets, simply because it is easier to find close substitutes for narrowly defined goods. As an example, you can think of pizza and food. Most probably you will be able to find a substitute for a pizza, but will have a problem finding a substitute for a food category. Next, time horizon. Goods tend to have more elastic demand over longer time horizons. Now, the price elasticity of demand is calculated by the following formula. Percentage change in quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in price. And here is a more mathematical representation of the same formula based on the midpoint calculation method. Now, let's try to visualize the elasticity using demand graphs. So, here is our usual demand graph, which we have already discussed during the previous chapters. Now let us discuss two different curves. First one, elastic demand. As you can see, due to a small change in the price, we have a big change in the quantity demanded. And the other one is the inelastic demand curve. Here we have the same change in quantity, but the change in price is much higher in this case. So that's why this graph shows an inelastic demand curve. Now, there are two other scenarios. One is perfectly elastic. This is a very radical approach, and you will not miss such demand curves in real life, at least not usually. However, the idea is that the uh, consumers are ready to pay only one price and the price cannot be changed. And the other approach, which is a little bit more realistic, is called the perfectly inelastic demand. 
Now, here, as you can see, despite of the price, the quantity demanded remains the same. And the logic here can be explained in certain situations. So this is an example when the quantity is fixed and the prices can change. But again, these two scenarios are very rare and you will not meet this in real life usually. It is important to keep in mind that the elasticity of demand affects the total revenue. To get the total revenue, we multiply the price of the goods sold by the quantity uh, of the sold goods. And here you can see the graphical representation of the calculation. Now, it's important to remember some general rules. First, when demand is inelastic, which means the price elasticity is less than one, price and total revenue move in the same direction. And the other scenario, when demand is elastic, a price elasticity is greater than one, price and total revenue move in opposite directions, which means if you increase your price, you decrease your revenue. And the third one, if demand is unit elastic, which we have just discussed, the price elasticity is exactly equal to one, total revenue remains constant when the price changes. One may think of other demand elasticities. For example, income elasticity of demand, which shows percentage change in quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in income. Basically, income elasticity of demand shows the relation of the change in income and change in quantity demanded. Another example, cross price elasticity of demand, which shows the relation of two different products and their prices. And the formula is simple as per percentage change in quantity demanded of good one divided by the percentage change in the price of a good two. Last but not least, let us also discuss the elasticity of supply, which is defined as a measure of how much the quantity supplied of a good responds to a change in the price of that good. Compute it as the percentage change in the quantity supply divided by the percentage change in the price. Now again, let's try to visualize the elasticity using supply graphs. So here we have our usual supply graph. Now let us take two other examples. Here we see an elastic supply curve and a red one represents an inelastic supply curve. So again, as you can see, in case of inelastic supply curve, you can see that the greater price change results in a smaller quantity change. You can compare these two graphs by picking some points on them and comparing the price and quantity change. And even you can compute the elasticity of supply for each of these graphs. And as in case of demand, we have also two rare cases. First is the graph of perfectly elastic supply, and the other is the graph of perfectly inelastic supply. Again, these are very rare cases, but you can think of real life scenarios when these are applicable models. So that's it. This was the revision session of chapter six elasticity and its applications. Thank you, and as always, please like and subscribe.